so, then you hope of pardon from Lord Angelo. The miserable have no other medicine but only hope. I have hope to live, and am prepared to die. Be absolute for death. Either death or life shall thereby be the sweeter. Reason thus with life. If I do lose thee, I do lose a thing that none but fools would keep. A breath thou art, servile to all sky influences that doth this habitation, where thou keep'st hourly afflict. Merely thou art death's fool. Thou hast neither heat, affection, limb, nor beauty to make thy riches pleasant. What's yet in this that bears the name of life? Yet in this life, like most thousand deaths, yet death be fear that makes these odds all evil. I humbly thank you. To suit to live, I, I find I seek to die, and seeking death find light. Let it come on. What ho, peace here, grace and good company. Oh, who's there? Well, come in, the wish deserves a welcome. Oh, dear sir, ere long I'll visit you again. Most holy sir, I thank you. My business is ordered to with Claudio. You're very welcome. Look, Signor, here's your sister. Provost, to work with you. As many as you please. Bring me to hear them speak where I may be conceited. Now, sister, what's the comfort? Why, as all comforts are, most good, most good indeed. The Lord Angelo, having affairs to heaven, intends you for his swift ambassador. For you shall remain an everlasting legend. Therefore, your best appointment make with speed. Tomorrow you set on. Is there no remedy? None, but such a remedy as to save a head to cleave a heart in twain. But is there any? Yes, brother. You may live. There's a devilish mercy in the judge if you'll implore it that will save your life but fetter you till death. Perpetual durance. I just perpetual durance. A restraint, though all the world's vicinity you had to a determined scope. But in what nature? Such a one as you consenting to it would bark your honor from that trunk you bear and leave you naked. Let me know the point. I do fear thee, Claudio, when I quake. Thus all feverish life should entertain, and six or seven winters more respect than a perpetual honor. Darest thou die? The sense of death is most in apprehension, and the poor beetle we do tread upon in corporal sufferance findings of paying as great as when a giant dies. Why give you me this shame? Think you I can a resolution fetch from flowery tenderness? If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in mine arms. There spake my brother. There my father's grave did utter forth a voice. Yes, I must die. Thou art too noble to conserve a life in base appliances. This outward sainted deputy whose settled visage and deliberate word nips you from the head as follies doth a mew, as falcons doth the fowl, is yet a devil. His filth within being cast, he would appear a pond as deep as hell. The precise Angelo. Tis the cunning livery of hell, the damnedest body to invest in cover and precise guards. Does not think, Claudio, if I were to yield him my virginity, thou might be freed. Oh, heavens, it cannot be. Yes. He would give it thee from this rank offense, and so to offend him still. Tonight's the time where I should do what I abhor to name, or else thou diest tomorrow. Thou shalt not do it. Were but my life, I'd throw it down for your deliverance as frankly as a pin. Thanks, dear Isabel. Be ready, Claudio, for your death tomorrow. Yes. Has he affections in him that thus can make him bite the law by the nose when he would force it? Sure, it is no sin, or, or of the deadly seven, it is the least. <laughs> Which is the least? If it were damnable, he being so wise, why would he for the momentary trick be perdurably fined? Who is about? What says my brother? Death is a fearful thing. And shamed life a hateful. Aye, but to die and go we know not where? To lie in cold obstruction and rot. This warm, sensible motion to become a kneaded clod. And the delighted spirit to bathe in fiery floods or, or reside in thrilling regions of thick ribbed ice. To be imprisoned in the viewless winds and blown with, with restless violence round about the pendant world. 
or to be worse than worst of those that lawless and insert the thought imagine how it is too horrible. The weariest and that most loathed worldly life that age, ache, penury and imprisonment can lay on nature's but a paradise to what we fear of death. Alas, alas. <laughs> Sweet sister, let me live. What sin you do to save a brother's life, nature dispenses with the deed so far that it becomes a virtue. Oh, you beast. Oh, faithless coward. Dishonest wretch. Wilt thou be made a man out of my vice? Is it not a kind of incest to take life from thine own sister's shame? What should I think? Heaven shield my mother, played my father fair. For such a warped slip of wilderness, there issued from his blood. Take my defiance, die, perish. Should but my bending down reprieve thee from thy fate, it should proceed. I will pray a thousand prayers for thy death, no word to save thee. Hear me, Isabella. Oh, fine, fine, fine! This is an accident or but a trade. Mercy to thee would prove itself a god. Tis best thou diest quickly. Oh, hear me, Isabella! I can't say for word, young sister, but one word. What is your will? Might you dispense with your leisure? I would by and by have some speech with you. The satisfaction I require is likewise your benefit. I have no superfluous leisure. My time must be stolen out of other affairs, but I will attend you a while. Son, I have overheard what hath passed between you and your sister. Angelo had never the purpose to corrupt her, only he hath made an assay of her virtues to practice his judgment with the disposition of natures. She, having the grace of honor in her, having made him that gracious denial which he is most glad to receive. I am confessor to Angelo, and I know this to be true. Therefore, prepare yourself for death. Do not satisfy your resolutions with hopes that are fallible. Tomorrow you must die. Go to your knees and make ready. Let me ask my sister pardon. I am so out of love with life, I would sue to be rid of it. Hold you there. Farewell. Provost, a word with you. What's your will, good friar? That now you are come, you will be gone. Leave me a while with the maid. My mind promises with my habit that no law shall touch her by my company. In good time. The hand that hath made you fair hath made you good. The goodness that is chief in beauty makes beauty brief in goodness. But grace, being the soul of your complexion, shall keep the body of it ever fair. The assault that Angelo made to you, fortune hath conveyed to my understanding, and, but that frailty hath examples of his falling, I should wonder at Angelo. How will you do to content this substitute and save your brother? I'm going to resolve him. I'd rather my brother die by the law than my son be unlawfully born. But oh, how the good Duke is deceived in Angelo. Should he ever return and I can speak with him, I will open my lips in vain or else discover his government. That shall not be much amiss. Yet, as it now stands, he will avoid your accusation. He made trial of you only. Therefore, Fasten your ear to my advisings. To the love I have in doing good, a remedy presents itself. I do make myself think that you may most uprightly do a poor wrong may a merited benefit. Redeem your brother from the angry law, do no stain to your own generous person, and thus please the an absent duke, if her adventure he shall ever return to have hearing of this business. Let me hear you speak further. I have spirit to do anything that appears not foul in the truth of my spirit. Virtue is bold and goodness never fearful. Have you not heard speak of Mariana, the sister of Frederick, the great soldier who miscarried at sea? I have heard of the lady, and good words went with her name. She should, this Angelo hath married, was affianced to her by oath, and the nuptial appointed, between which time of the contract and the limit of solemnity her brother Frederick was wrecked at sea, having in that perished vessel the, the dowry of his sister. 
But mark how heavily this befell the poor gentlewoman. There she lost a noble and renowned brother, in his love for her ever most kind and natural, with him, the fortune and sinew of her fortune, her marriage dowry. With both, her competent husband, this well-seeming Angelo. Can this be so? Did Angelo so leave her? Left her in her tears and dried not one of them with his comfort. Oh. Uh, swallowed his vows whole, uh, pretending in her discoveries of dishonor, in few bestowed her on her own lamentation which she yet wears for his sake. And he, a marvel to her tears, is washed with them, but relents not. Oh, what a merit worded in death to take this poor maid from the world. But oh, what corruption is it in life that it shall let this man live? How of this can she avail? It is a rupture that you may easily heal. And the cure of it not only saves your brother, but keeps you from dishonor in doing it. Go on. This forenamed maid hath yet in her a continuance of her first affection, his unjust unkindness that in all reason should have quenched her love, hath like an impediment in a current made it more violent and unruly. Go you to Angelo and answer his requirings with a plausible obedience. Agree to his demands to the point, but refer yourself to this advantage. First, that your stay with him might not be long, that the time may, shall have all shadow and silence in it, and the place answer to convenience. This being granted in course, and now follows by him, we shall advise the wrong thing to stead up your point. Go in your place. If the encounter acknowledges itself hereafter, it may compel him to her recompense. And then by this, your brother is saved, your honor untainted, the poor Mariana advantage, and the corrupt deputy scaled. The maid I will frame and make fit for his attempt. If you think well to carry this as you may, the doubleness of the benefit defends the deceit from reproof. What think you of it? Oh, the image of it gives me content already. And I trust it shall grow to most prosperous perfection. It lies much in your holding up. Haste you speedily to Angelo, if for this night he entreat you to his bed, give him promise of satisfaction. I shall presently <laughs> to St. Luke's. There at the moated range resides the dejected Mariana. At that place call upon me, and dispatch with Angelo that it may be quickly. I will about it straight. Thank you, Father, for this good comfort. 